Thank you. Calls and webinars are recorded for stakeholder convenience, allowing those who are unable to attend to listen to the recordings after the meetings. The recordings will be publicly available on the ISO webpage for a limited time following the meeting. The recordings and any related transcriptions should not be reprinted without the ISO permission. We have the following agenda today. We'll talk about the map stage availability. We'll talk about the known issues for ADS. Then we'll get a quick update about the ADS replacement transition. And then we'll talk about independent 2020 releases, uh, structured scenario registration details, and market simulation initiatives and timelines, different initiatives, and the next steps. Map stage availability can also be found at, by logging into portalmap.kaiser.com. Currently, in map stage, we have an extended outage for CMRI UI API, uh, extended till today. Uh, we don't have anything for stage today, and the upcoming for upcoming ma maintenance for uh, map stage, we have market brief interruption, which means I have a Marty and, and BOP uh, starting 10:15 today at 4 p.m. And on Friday we have DRS API brief interruption. Uh, no upcoming maintenance for stage as of now. Anybody has any questions for these uh, maintenances that we're going to perform? All right, if you want to mute, unmute yourself, you can press star six or space bar. That will help you unmute. All right, moving on to the next slide. We just have one known issue uh, on ADS right now, which is basically we're providing a service to all the market participants to move over their profiles from map stage environment to stage and to prod. If you want to avail the service, please uh, send us a CD ticket with your profile information, uh, and we would make sure that we transfer that profile to the different environments. Moving on, let's talk about ADS replacement transition. Trying, do you want to give, an, give us an update about this? Thanks, Instrument. So a lot of this information um, has been repeated several times. So as we go, and but we do have a couple of new slides that we um, raised in the TUG earlier this week and also sent out um, related um, customer communication emails to about. Um, so I will go ahead and just give an update and move quickly through the slides that we've already presented and then highlight some of the changes. Um, so we still are on track for the transition beginning October 20th, which is Tuesday next week uh, to the 21st. So on the slide itself, there are no changes. Um, from the Monday call, um, except for the date, and then from the tag on Tuesday. So we can move on, Anshman. All right, so on this slide, also no updates, um, except for the implementation date, which will be the 20th to the 21st. So we can move on. All right, no changes here. Um, so we can move on. All right, um, so um, the reminder of connectivity um, still applies. We are doing outreach to anyone who we don't see successful connectivity for, and um, so, but no, no um, information has changed here, so we can move on. All right, um, some more uh, reference details, so we can move on past this slide. Okay, um, this is more reference information to support connectivity, so we can move on past this as well. All right, and this is a, a crucial one too. Um, hasn't been updated, but it kind of gives an overview of the activities uh, that are expected and the customer impact and, um, the, and expectations for phase one and phase two on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we can move on. 
process. All right, this is just the features that I think we've communicated several times um, when um, each feature will be available and what will be disabled so we can go on. All right, an overview schedule, um, no changes there, so we can continue on instrument. All right, and again, the IPs, there's just a quick clarification here too, is you'll see in the production column that we did strike through the existing IPs for the API and the UI because um, there may have been confusion um, that we were referring to the new IPs as additional IPs to whitelist. Um, and in fact, uh, the clarification is that starting on the 20th with the transition for phase one of ADS replacement, those existing IPs will no longer be available. So um, that's why there's such um, an emphasis on the criticality of doing the connectivity test that goes against the new IPs. So the ones for um, the APIs are uh, especially important as well as the UIs as well. Um, so if you've done the connectivity, then um, then you're, you've confirmed um, this information is all set up on your side. Um, but we did just clarify that the old IPs will not be available um, with phase one. All right, so we can go on instruments. All right, so we did add some new content here um, based on some discussion that we had, uh, well, even before the talk, but, um, but we wanted to reiterate here. Um, so before, um, for the prep work, um, this is just clarification and a reminder to not hard code to IP addresses. Um, that uh, And so we did get some questions and some clarifications, and I don't think that it was um, clear to customers um, for those that have um, hard-coded IP addresses, those will need to be adjusted. And then um, if you're not using the name, um, which we recommend you using, then that timing, that, that change will have to be coordinated with the phase one. And so um, there may be some impact to you if you are using the IPs, which we do not recommend. So this slide kind of summarizes that. There should have been also a, um, a customer communication email that went out to explain and remind um, that as well. So action can be taken by your organizations now to verify that you're not um, hard coding IPs. And this is, again, to um, uh, better ensure the successful transition of phase one on uh, Tuesday, okay? All right, Benjamin, I think there's one more slide for ADS. So this is also a new slide um, for the ADS cutover. So just some troubleshooting tips of things that we've seen and um, on either the dry run cutover in stage that some of you participated in or just um, things that we've um, found on our um, rehearsals internally as well, okay? So, so uh, a little bit of new content, and this shouldn't be the first time that you have seen this because, again, um, for ADS users, you should have received um, uh, numerous customer communication emails um, with this content as well. So we're trying our best to align all of this. And then um, one other update overall is that we are pulling all of this, we're extracting all of this information that we've been updating via the tug and rug and market sim calls. We're putting that into the fall external implementation plan so that it's there in one place and then that artifact will be your one-stop shop for all of this information and what to expect and that should be published by um, today or tomorrow um, for your review of all the latest information in one place to prepare for um, Tuesday. Um, so those are the updates that I have for ADS. I'm happy to take any questions on that now. All right, Benjamin, it's all yours. Thanks. Thank you, Trang, for the update uh, on ADS. Uh, moving on. Uh, independent 2020 releases. Uh, we have the date of registration was October 9, but we'll still accommodate if you have any late registrations. We'll try to accommodate that. These are our different initiatives and the timelines for these projects. Uh, FRP improvements buffer and min project. We were supposed to do the market simulation on 13th of October. We faced some technical difficulties. We couldn't proceed with that, so we performed the scenarios on 14th instead. Uh, all the scenarios were performed, and 
they are ready for you to review the results. Nodal pricing model, we are going to start the structure scenario for that project on 28th of October and intertie deviation settlement on 21st of October. I have uh, my subject matter expert for intertie deviation settlement project with me here, and uh, I will now give it to him to give me a quick background about the synthetized deviation settlement project, if he can. Luis? Luis, if you're talking, probably you're on mute. Uh, you can do star six or space bar. Okay, uh, we'll catch on Lewis in a couple of minutes. He's having some technical difficulties. Just to remind everyone that if you are on mute, you can always press star six. Okay, moving on. Uh, for different uh, micro ma market simulation initiatives, we have Alyssa Canyon phase five. Uh, we don't have a timeline for we're not doing any market simulation on, on it yet and trying to have an update on this timeline for Alyssa Canyon phase five. Hi, um, Anshuman. So based on um, the feedback that we receive externally and then the, um, uh, you know, the lack of um, intent to participate as well as the minimal impact that Alisa Canyon um, implementation will have. I think that um, the team decided that um, there's not going to be a formal market simulation for Aliso Canyon at this point. Um, and uh, so, so the code will continue to be there and it's more for our Department of Market Monitoring and our internal um, review and validation. Um, and we're, um, we're just, uh, we wanted to state that here, and we're happy to take any feedback from customers that are still interested or have other thoughts. Otherwise, um, we will likely just remove that from um, the market sim uh, plan and continue to track it just for production readiness. So, um, I know Adrian is on too. If Adrian would like to add anything, um, otherwise, um, if we don't have any feedback, we will remove this from the independent market sim and then um, just continue to track in the rug for production readiness. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, at this point, uh, this is kind of uh, the conclusion we reach uh, on the execution of this project. And um, we'll, we'll keep uh, updating all market participants in terms of our plans for production activation. But um, given the feedback and the understanding we have of the project during those you know, testing phases we have internally um, on the, the course of the project uh, will not require market simulation unless we hear some special interest from any of you. All right, thank you, Adrian and Trang, for the update on this project. Uh, if you want to go through the business requirement specification for this project, the link is provided here. You can feel free to, you know, go to that link and access the document. Next project we have is FRP improvements, buffer and min. We performed the structured scenario, as I mentioned before, on 14th of October, and we were able to successfully complete all the scenarios. And you could go ahead and verify the results on CMRI or OSS. Next project we have is Energy Imbalance Market Enhancements 2020. The timeline for testing for this project is from October 26th to October 30th for CMRI. The BOP and BSAP are currently available in map stage. And the unstructured scenarios document is available at the following link. Uh, any questions from anybody here for these three projects? All right, moving on. Hybrid resources, phase one. The testing timeline for this project is between October 26th to November 13th, and the business requirement specification document is available at the following link. Commitment cost and default energy bid enhancements project. Timeline was 
July 27 to November 24th. And there's another timeline, November 10, for new cyber rules. Training document is available at the following link. Nodal pricing model, the timeline to test this project is between October 6 to October 30. The structured scenarios will be performed on October 20th, and the structured scenario document is available at the following location. Any questions here for all these, uh, these three projects? All right, moving on. Intertide Deviation Settlement. Uh, timeline to test this project is between October 20 to November 20, and the structured scenario document is available at the following link. I'm told that my SME is now able to unmute, and uh, I'll hand it over to Louis to give us a, a quick brief on this project. Hey, this is Luis from Settlements. Can you hear me now? Yes, Luis, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, just a brief description of um, what to expect for intertie deviation settlement. So we're terminating two charge codes, um, 6455 and 6457. This is for the previous um, decline charge, um, half the decline charge and half the decline um, allocation. And we're creating two new charge codes, um, 6456 and 6458. Um, those, that will be your intertie deviation settlement and intertie deviation settlement allocation. Um, just a few points for, for these for these two new charge codes. Um, curtail, curtailments will now be excluded for non-delivery charge, um, and that was not the case from the prior charge code, so that's an improvement. Um, the non-delivery charge will be evaluated in each 15-minute interval. It's going to be a daily charge code, unlike previously, uh, which was a monthly. 15-minute uh, market schedules will be assessed based on difference between transmission profile and the HASP awards. Um, Non-delivery will be subject to a charge equal to 50% of the maximum of the 15-minute or the 5-minute real-time dispatch LMP, and it will also have a $10 um, per megawatt hour minimum plus any imbalanced energy charges. And then finally, additional 25% charge at the greater of the LMP or RTD LMP when the scheduling coordinator accepts an award in ADS but fails to deliver the energy. So those are my, my uh, brief high-level points for IDS. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. Uh, anybody has any questions for Luis? All right, you can always feel free to send us an email with your questions or concerns at marketsimatkaiso.com and we will forward it to Luis to answer those questions. Thank you, Luis. Uh, now let's move on to the next project, Symmetrical Wheeling. The timeline to test this project is between October 20 to November 20, and the business requirement specification document is available at the following link. Settlements Q4 winter release. We have just posted the third draft configuration output file on 8th of October. Uh, the map stage deployment was done on 6th of October, and connectivity for PAC is between 13th of October to 21st of October. We we'll perform the structured scenarios on 20th of October. The technical documentation is available at the following link. That's all I had. On, from my side today, uh, next meeting will be on October 19th, Monday at 2 p.m. Now I'll open up for any con concerns or suggestions from market participants. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, this is Gabrielle Ramirez with the City of Riverside. Um, sorry, I couldn't get off mute. Um, I have some questions about the structured scenarios for um, intertie deviation settlements. Uh, my first question is, are all three structure scenarios going to be executed on the same trade day? And if they are, does the ISO know which hours they're going to be executed for? Oh, for the hours purposes, we are planning to do it in the morning set, like between 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, on the technical part, I'll hand it over to Luis to give us more detail on it. Um, hi, this is Luis. Um, I actually don't know what trade dates are going to be executed. I know the date range, but that's a good question. I think this is something that I can get back to you. I'll definitely find out um, the specific trade dates that we're planning to execute these scenarios on. Um, 
I don't know if um, we have Assad on the line. Anshuman, do you know if he's on the line? He might know the exact trade date. Oh, the trade date Hi, is this is from you from Pigeon E. I think you guys set the trade date as uh, October 21st. Yes. And um, Anshuman, do you mind to put in the uh, hours there for which test scenarios um, in the next market sim call? Oh, definitely. I can do that. Thank you. Like the, the time window when we'll perform it. So it is a little bit fluid. Sometimes we might have system issues and we might shift to that. So I don't want us to sticking to that timeline, but that is the general timeline where we start and end. But uh, we can always extend that time and do more testing if more, test, uh, more testing time is required. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is Gabriella again. I have one more question. So as far as the ISO market participant actions, I mean, the market participant actions that um, require tagging actions, for example, in scenario three, uh, market participants must create e-tag for their market award. Is there a test environment for um, tagging? Or is that something that the ISO could then perform for market participants? I believe there is an ITS environment for tagging in map stage. Uh, if I have Justin on the line, Justin, are you there? Or maybe Luis, can you tell us more about the tagging? Um, unfortunately, I'm not the right person to ask about this. However, I think it should be the same a mechanism that you do tagging in production, just pointed to the uh, map stage environment. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, you might have to ask Justin or someone from ITS. Uh, but we have okay, an open city Lewis. ticket. We have an open city ticket right now. If I can give you that number and maybe somebody can respond on that ticket. Yes, that will be really helpful. Please give me the city ticket. Uh, it's 229779. All right, let me take a look and I'll reply back on this ticket. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any more questions? All right, thank you everyone for joining this call. Uh, we'll talk again later on Monday, October 19th. Thank you.